Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to Life on Earth. Hope you guys are doing well today. We're gonna to be doing another reaction video, but we're gonna continue the theme that we've kind of started here about um, just slowly getting into watches. If you are new to watch collecting, I think this is gonna be helpful for, deep, for you. I'm sure you've stumbled across some of these videos if you are um, just getting into watches, but we're gonna be looking at uh, Teddy Balthazar's um, video called Beginning, Beginner Watch Buying Mistakes, Things That Are Overlooked. I hope this is gonna be informative, but it also is gonna be an, uh, 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 it's going to be a video where I'll give you my thoughts on some of the topics that he discusses. Um, so I hope this is going to be helpful for you. And without further ado, let's get into it. Honestly, getting more people into watches has become a big part of who I am and of course what this channel is. Whenever I see someone out in public that might show some interest in watches or ask me questions, I always do all I can to encourage them to continue to let this curiosity shine. However, the world of watches is one that can be overwhelming with the plethora of options that you have as a buyer and with the amount of information needed to make an informed purchase. What's going on everybody? My name is Teddy Baldassar and in this video we are going to be talking about beginner watch buying mistakes and things that are overlooked when you're first getting into watches. These mistakes will be both things to consider when buying as well as things that are often overlooked shortly after buying that might cause damage to your new watch. So guys, let's jump into it. Love this intro. I've said it in some of the other videos that I've watched of his. First up is not really a mistake, but something I think so many people overlook when they're first getting into watches. About a year ago, I was having a conversation with one of my friends who is yet to be the watch fan that he is now, and we were talking about Apple Watches. One of the top reasons he stated that he liked Apple Watches was because he said he could switch the straps. And I just remember looking at him really puzzled, and I was like, what, what do you mean? I think this conversation serves a really important point. Many newcomers believe that they are married to the strap that comes with their watch. Even worse, I know many people that make an entire watch buying decision based on a watch strap. One of the best aspects of being a collector and an enthusiast is just having the ability to change the straps based on outfits or just giving a watch a totally different look. If you guys are interested in learning more about straps, I've done a whole video about where to buy watch straps as well as how to change them out. The other thing I will mention is I have a watch strap line going to be launched by the end of the summer. I'm working on my shop right now. If you guys want updates on that, I'd recommend going to the site, filling out the form so we can keep you up to date when it does go live. Uh, that's my shameless plug for the video. <laughs> All right, so two minutes really quickly. So um, I'm glad I was able to plug for you, Teddy. Um, uh, but in the beginning of the video, so something that he mentioned was it can be very overwhelming when you're getting into watches because there's so many options so many things to consider. And I think that's something you can kind of have some, you can be paralyzed by the amount of choices that you have. And I completely agree that um, there are some things that perhaps we overlook because we, there's just so much out there to think about, you know, so much information uh, about uh, watches, but there's so many different brands and so many different, um, you know, designs and, and movements, it's very difficult to kind of consume all of it, which I, one of the reasons why I call it a journey, you know, this is a watch, you're on a watch uh, journey, um, because your taste will evolve, they may come back to what your original taste may have been, um, you may uh, make decisions that, and realize, oh, I don't really like that, and, and those types of conclusions you have to come to naturally by yourself. Um, so, know that I am aware, we are all aware in the watch community that there, that it can be very overwhelming. So take your time. Um, I think that's probably my first uh, kind of uh, things that are overlooked. Yes, there's a lot of stuff, but take your time. Um, the next is about straps. So I thought that was an interesting point. I actually haven't um, met someone who, who made a deci uh, purchase decision just based on the strap. Um, maybe I'm not talking to the right people. <laughs> um, but uh, it's, it's a good point. Yes, you are not married to that strap. Uh, you can change the straps out very easily. Um, and um, that's what makes uh, watches really exciting because you can have versatility in the watches you end up on, you end up purchasing. So we'll continue here. The next point is one that I have addressed on this channel before as well, the incredibly misleading concept of water resistance. So if you're buying a watch and it says that it's 30 meters water resistant, 
you would probably guess that that watch would be suitable for being able to swim down 30 meters, or at least jump in the pool with it. However, unfortunately, this is completely not true. A watch that is 30 meters water resistant is just splash proof. In other words, this is not a watch that you want to be getting wet at all. If you are interested in learning more about the truth behind water resistance and what goes into the different ratings and what they mean, I will link to a video that I have done all about water resistance, the testing, in the description down below. Next up is more of something to avoid after you get a watch, uh, and it is mostly prominent in affordable watches. However, it is still best to never do this, and that is changing the day or date function when the time of the watch reads between the hours of 9 p.m. and 3 a.m. The reason for this is fairly simple. Although the date and the day, it changes over close to midnight, the gears that make the change happen to engage a little bit earlier in some watches, and it takes some extra time for this to disengage completely in its aftermath. The result of changing the day or date while the changeover is happening can lead to a misalignment in the date or day window and can also cause uh, free and loose parts to go about in your watch. So this next point is not just a point that I think newcomers experience and overlook, it's really every watch. Just really quickly at 3.30 to discuss those last two, those, the two points that were made. Um, so uh, the point about water resistance, I think this again is about taking watch collecting slowly here. Um, understand Understanding that there are different watches that you can use for different activities is very important. Um, another thing that you must consider is buying a watch is really a luxury no matter what price point you buy it at. Um, it's a luxury because uh, it's essentially telling you time and it's an accessory um, to, your, to your wardrobe, to your outfit. Um, it can mean a lot more, obviously, but um, bare bones, that's what it is, right? Um, so swimming, swimming recklessly with any type of watch may not be the best decision. Um, however, you can buy something like a dive watch that does have some water resistance. Um, this goes back to my, my first point though is Take it slow, understand what water resistance um, actually means when it comes to watches, um, what depth rating also means when it comes to watches, and understand that those decisions should be taken into consideration when you're purchasing a watch. I think you can avoid um, making this mistake if you just take your time, do your research, um, you, you'll find something that, uh, um, that'll, that'll be um, uh, capable of doing what you want it to do. Um, and then um, the piece about the movement, I, I, I don't mind sharing this at all. When I first got into watches, um, I didn't know that that, um, that uh, one should adjust the date or um, the date of, the, of your watch when your hands are um, basically below three and uh, three, uh, the three o'clock a.m. and nine o'clock uh, p. Uh, nine o'clock a.m. It should be below that time. So. Um, if you look at your, the dial of the watch, your hand should be uh, pointing, uh, should be, uh, the hours and minutes hand should be below the three o'clock hour mark and the nine o'clock hour mark um, in, in the morning. Um, how do you know that? And what ended up happening was I was adjusting the time and um, then for some reason, the next time I went to adjust the time, the uh, date was actually adjusting, the date was flipping to the next day um, when uh, the hands uh, passed the six o'clock mark and I made a mistake and um, I think I, I'm fine acknowledging that I made a mistake. We're all human here, right? And this was early on in my, in my watch collecting uh, knowledge or watch knowledge. And so I had to get that watch serviced. Um, this is, uh, this happened because what ended up happening was the, um, one of the tooths of the gear ended up um, breaking off and um, like he said was rattling around in the case and this has to do with like he was saying when the date actually passes um, it has to do with the date wheel as well as the time wheel uh, they were grinding on each other definitely something that you should know so you don't end up um, making the same mistake that I did and having to pay uh, the service bill so we'll watch this straight to the end now enthusiast and that is understanding the dimensions of a watch and yes knowing the case diameter is of course important However, I would argue that it is not the most important factor to consider. Things like case height and lug to lug height are incredibly crucial in determining how a watch will wear on your wrist. For me, I have found that some 42 millimeter case size watches 
fit better than a 40 millimeter watch as a result of their case height. Let's use my Nomos Orion as an example. The case measures in at 35 millimeters. However, when you factor in the lugs, this 35 millimeter watch wears more like a 38 to 40 millimeter watch with its 44.4 millimeter lug to lug height. In fact, that is bigger lug to lug height than my Young Hands Maxbook Chronoscope, a watch that comes in with a 40 millimeter case. What do you think of this list? Is there any points that I miss? I'd love to hear your comments down below about other things to consider um, when you're going ahead and buying a watch either as a newcomer or a seasoned vet. So guys, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, be sure to subscribe, also hit that bell icon so you know when I release content for the future. I also have been starting to post way more watches on Instagram as well, so that's a great way to just kind of stay connected with me on a more personal level. And then lastly, I just started a Patreon. My hope for that is to help fund a editor, a new editor for my videos so we can kind of maximize the output. I will continue to edit, but for me, the Check bottleneck is editing uh, when you're working 50, 60 the, hours a week. The, uh, the uh, it's kind of tough to um, you know, to keep up videos, with other so. content creators and I want to keep the quality and everyone have to sacrifice. Um, so that's just kind of a dream of mine. If you guys are interested, check it out. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon. All right, so I'm glad I gave Teddy a plug there um, for his channel because he really does create great content and um, it's worth uh, checking out. Um, so the last point um, that he made was um, around understanding the dimensions of a watch. I think this is a relevant point to make. Um, you know, watches are going to fit differently, right? Um, buying only 40 millimeter watches because you know that I have put on a 40 millimeter watch in the past and it fit me really, really nicely is probably the wrong approach to go with. Um, experiencing multiple different types of watches with, with, with different, like he said, um, case, uh, case heights and lug to lug measurements. That's, or uh, yeah, uh, lug to lug measurements. That is going to be extremely helpful if you once you start uh, trying to experience new watches and i think what really um something that a lot of um something that i would add to this video is um my, my two points are uh, make sure you do your research and understand exactly what you're purchasing and then the second thing is experience watches go and try watches on and and understand what they feel like and and ask people to change out the straps so you can experience that. Boutiques will do that all the time. Um, that will allow you to be a lot more educated on what you're getting into, what you like, what you don't like. And those are really important points for, um, for you to have. So I hope you enjoyed this this reaction video for, for Teddy's video. Uh, big shout out to Teddy for, for, for uploading this video so that I could react to it. Obviously it wasn't just for me to react to, but um, he does really make some great videos. So be sure to check out Teddy's channel in the, in the description. I'll leave a link to this video so that you can check that out. Um, and with that said guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time.